everybody? I'm coming to you live from my home office. Okay, so Crystal is indisposed at the moment. We wanted to give you all a live reaction to the Supreme Court's overturning of Roe versus Wade. I'm going to try and stick to the facts here and just give you guys everything that you need to know. Number one, so the Supreme Court overruled Roe versus Wade, ruling with a 6-3 decision. The majority decision was authored by Justice Alito, as was indicated in that leak that came out from Politico a few months ago. So the Chief Justice actually did end up voting with the majority, but he went ahead and said he would have taken a, quote, more measured course, stopping short of overruling Roe versus Wade outright. The court's three liberal members obviously dissented. There were a couple of concurrent um, but I want to get to the immediate effect of what it actually means right now. So there are 22 states right now where abortion is going to either be illegal or restricted in some form. So in terms of the states where they're going to be illegal as a result of trigger laws, I believe there are 13 different states. So I'm going to read them off. We've got Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, South Dakota, North Dakota, Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Kentucky. So on top of those, there are also a couple of states that have pre-Roe versus Wade abortion bans that are still on the books. Alabama, Arizona, Michigan, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. Now, in terms of near total bans, you're going to have Georgia, which has got the six-week abortion ban, obviously, that passed in 2019. We've got Iowa, Ohio, South Carolina. So that's basically two, 22 states where you're going to see a change to existing abortion procedure and laws that currently exist that are on the books. Now, in terms of what's being made of the decision itself, obviously there was a lot of fear. Uh, Crystal wanted me to go ahead and highlight this. In a solo concurring opinion, Justice Thomas says that the court should, quote, reconsider rulings that protect contraception, same-sex relationships, and same-sex marriage. So I think that there's going to be a lot politically that's gone ahead and made of that. So right now, as I'm recording this for all of you, the White House has not yet issued a statement. President Biden is actually set to go and go. I believe he's going to Germany for the G7 tomorrow, but he's got nothing on his schedule. Everything was keeping it open. We actually were kind of expecting this to drop next week, not necessarily today, because there was a chance, or at least the people I had spoken to had said, that they were going to consider it happening there. So, okay, we've kind of had covered the decision. In terms of what the decision actually reads, for those who care, it is, quote, held the Constitution does not confer a right to abortion. Roe and Casey are overruled, and the authority to regulate abortion is returned to the people and their elected representatives. Now, what I think Crystal wanted me to highlight in particular was also, obviously, uh, failures by the Democrats in order to try and enshrine any of this in law. Although, you know, I I think some of it has failed uh, legislatively the last two times that it's been brought forward by Senate Majority Chuck Schumer. It is still going to obviously change the political landscape here in Washington in the immediate term. Now, on the broader politics of it, uh, we've talked a lot about what the public polling and all of that says. I mean, the truth is, for anybody who is watching, no matter where you are, which is that the vast majority of the public broadly did support the Roe versus Wade architecture. Now, what does that mean, though, in terms of actual turnout and the seismic change in the election? To be honest, what we have seen so far is that Democrats, while well, yes, do not agree or are, yes, they're outraged by the decision, nobody has indicated, at least in the enthusiasm polling yet, that this is actually going to have any immediate effect in terms of turnout, in terms of uh, actually affecting the 2022 midterm results. I do think, though, and this is important, kind of comes back to the Justice Thomas um, concurrence, which is that this could actually at least heighten the risk for Republicans who are running in swing states and more contested districts. So obviously what comes to mind is somebody like a Todd Aiken, who came out with the legitimate rape comments in 2012. Uh, in general, our most basic theory of politics is that whichever side appears more extreme on the culture wars is the one who's going to lose and he's going to pay a price. That being said, in terms of uh, overall impact, it is not likely, at least in what we've seen right now, 
uh, that is going to dramatically change turnout. But on the margins and in a few select swing states, it's certainly possible. You could put this up there with like a stop the steal where it could hurt the Republicans down ballot and more, but the broad contours of the election are obviously still going to probably remain inflation and more. Now, uh, in terms of Democrats, their strategy and everything, we um, still look, obviously, this just broke today, so we don't have anything immediate yet. You can effectively count on some sort of messaging bills that will probably go forward in the House of Representatives and in the Senate. And I do think there is going to be some major political pressure on President Biden. Uh, He issued some executive orders um, on a few things yesterday. It's very likely, given the leak that happened, that they're going to have some executive orders in the tank. As to how exactly that's going to have a broad effect, uh, I don't know. So anyway, Uh, I just wanted to give you all a live reaction and just what the decision actually held to go over it again one more time. Roe versus Wade overturned by the Supreme Court with a 6-3 majority. Uh, The broader political implication that we've seen yet so far is one in which this does increase some risk for Republicans, but it's not necessarily energizing Democrats to the level that we had, uh, to the level that some people had thought, including myself, to be honest. Uh, I thought people would be more outraged. And then In terms of what it means in the most immediate effect, there are 22 states where you're going to see either they already have an abortion ban that predates 1973, already bans abortion after six weeks, has a row trigger law, which is those 13 different states, and then basically there are other states with multiple laws which have... uh, which have restrictions that are on the book. So it's going to get complicated. Um, I expect things, you know, it's possible things could get messy, all of that. Uh, but everybody, go ahead and stay safe out there. I wanted to make sure that you were all informed. And uh, obviously, politics is probably going to change over the next 48 hours, and we're going to give you guys reactions. If anything breaking big happens, you can count on us. We'll jump on and try to give you a live reaction like this. So I hope that this helps, and I hope you guys all have a great day.